Welcome to Worship at St. Paul's and happy Consecration Sunday. This week, the church is reevaluating uh, all of our skills, our time, our commitments, and our resources to see how we can better leverage that for the community and for the kingdom. I hope this week you'll consider filling out a pledge card and joining us as we uh, endeavor for a wonderful 2023. And now, let us join in worship. Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray. Blessed Lord, who caused all holy scriptures to be written for our learning, grant us so to hear them, read, mark, learn, and inwardly digest them, that we may embrace and ever hold fast the blessed hope of everlasting life, which you have given us in our Savior Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from 2 Thessalonians. Now we command you, beloved, in the name of Jesus Christ our Lord, 
to keep away from believers who are living in idleness and not according to the tradition that they had received from us. For you yourselves know how you ought to imitate us. We were not idle when we were with you, and we did not eat everyone's bread without paying for it. But with toil and labor, we worked day and night so that we may not burden any of you. This was not because we do not have that right, but in order to give you an example to imitate. For even when we were with you, we gave you this command. Anyone unwilling to work should not eat. For we hear that some of you are living in idleness, mere busybodies, not doing any work. Now such persons we commend and exhort in the Lord Jesus Christ to do their work quietly and to earn their own living. Brothers and sisters, do not be weary in doing what is right. The word of the Lord. Switching it up a little bit today. It's been uh, been a while since I preached down here. Back in my younger days, I think I was down here a little bit more. Uh, would throw pictures up on the wall, but... I've been hearing voices lately. Uh, yeah, I know. Ever, ever since Halloween. Um, I probably should talk to a therapist about it, but I thought, you know, I'd run it by all of you guys first. Exactly what they tell us not to do in our training <laughs> as pastors. Not those kind of voices. They're real voices. The first voices I heard were that of my two daughters. I heard them talking to each other at the dining room table while they were playing with Legos, and they were talking about the theme for today, money, stewardship. Solvay said, if I were super rich, I would buy a house in Disney World, and I'd give a little bit away. And Dorothy immediately interrupted her, and she goes, a little bit? And I was so proud. She'd, she'd caught on of a family culture that we've tried to establish with our kids, that we want to be a generous family. We give more than a little bit. We give more than just leftovers. We find that the money we give to support people in need, to support our church and other organizations we believe in, bring a far deeper sense of meaning to our lives than a fancier house or a better vacation. And we want to pass that on to our kids. We start our budget with our giving, and we work with what's left. A little bit, Dot said. She's caught on. To Soul's credit, at least giving was her second thought after the house in Disney World that she plans to buy. Today is Consecration Sunday. It's the day when church members make a pledge for next year and decide whether they'll give a little bit, a little more, or a lot, and they make a pledge. And the day calls us to think about money and time and talents and why all of it matters, what it all goes to support and make happen. Now, a few of you might remember I preached pretty directly about money a few weeks ago. I know a lot of people leave other churches because all they feel like they do is hear, you know, pastors shaking the coin purse at them or something. So I'll I'll limit what I have to say specifically about money. Um, first thing I want to say is thank you. I know many of you give sacrificially. Because you give, things are a little tighter at home. Because you give, you can't pad your savings as much. Or you can't buy as many things or pay off as much debt. But you freely give to support this church community because you believe in it. You're a St. Paul's believer. Thank you to those who give regularly. I know more and more people are signing up for automatic giving, which helps our finance committee and everyone else with planning. And I know many of you use the traditional envelope system and are probably more reliable than the banks because you're on it every week or every month, signing a check and putting an envelope in the plate. So thank you. And thank you to those who give proportionately. That was the point of the gospel sermon 
of the gospel text that we heard Jesus talking about. Apparently, Jesus paid attention to percentages. He saw a wealthy person, say, making $100,000, $200,000 a year, put $1,000 into the treasury, much more than what the widow could put in, but not proportionate to his income in the same way. It was maybe a percentage. The wealthy person had deep pockets but short arms. All that down there, but just couldn't quite get to it. Deep pockets and short arms. And that's the challenge, is to give sacrificially, regularly, proportionately. As I said, and say at least once or twice a year, Abigail and I try to walk the walk. We give 10% of our income and feel good about it. Most of it goes to the church, but we also have other. We support Princeton Seminary and our colleges and some other organizations. Most of it goes to the church. Abigail keeps getting promoted and making more money than I do. I think there was like a three-month period where I made a little bit more money than she did, and I just held my head high for a little bit and <laughs> came home a couple months later. She got promoted and blew me out of the water again. But every time that happens for her or for me, we, our giving goes up proportionately. Next year, we'll pledge $950 a month to support our church that we love and whose mission we believe in deeply in our core. And we do it because we believe God calls us to it, because we feel like it shapes our spiritual journey. And for me, I find it liberates me from envy as well. It liberates me from feeling like I need that or I need to keep up with them. It's almost like if I can freely give this away, then it doesn't have a hold on me. It's a deeply spiritual, liberating experience for me. God wants our giving, not because God is Scrooge keeping a tally of whatever everyone gives, but because at the end of the day, God wants our hearts. Where your treasure is, there your heart will be. God wants our hearts. Which brings me to the next voice I heard, and to live up to my promise that I would talk about money for a little while and then, then move on. God wants our hearts. Moves me to the next voice. I overheard Frank singing this past week. Adam can, can work wonders with, with our children. He opened the children's choir up to four-year-olds this, this fall, and Frank turned four at the end of September, and he passed the behavior test uh, going in, and, you know, he could sit on, on his behind and follow directions and, and not distract everyone from the 30-minute rehearsal. And so he's been learning these songs. This is a, a beautiful thing. Martin Luther loved music so much because it helps us remember things. He would put Bible verses to music because if it's in music, we can remember the words a little bit. And so Frank's been singing this song. They're going to sing it at 11 a.m. You maybe come back so you can hear it. But I, I would hear him singing. He would, he would say, I will give my heart to the Lord. He's working on his R's. I will give my heart to the Lord is what he's singing and what he'll sing at 11 a.m. with several other families, children. It's a perfect song for Consecration Sunday. That's what it's all about at the end of the day, is giving our heart to the Lord. What does that look like for you? Peter Block wrote an excellent book about community and what makes a community work, what sustains it. If any of you are a supporter of a group or an organization or a neighborhood, I encourage you to get this book. It's simply called Community by Peter Block, and he writes about citizens, but I'm going to tweak it a little bit and, and talk about members. And he wrote, a member is one who is willing to be accountable for and committed to the well-being of the whole, a willingness to care for the well-being of the whole community. That was the trouble that the author was addressing in the second Thessalonians text that we heard. It was talking about all these people who are being idle. They're kind of just watching everyone else do, do the work, um, and they were sitting on their hands. 
for various reasons, uh, they, they had stopped being accountable for the group. It said, we hear that some of you are living in idleness, not doing any work. We command them to do their work. Brothers and sisters, do not be weary in doing what is right. If only the Second Thessalonians community had a nice database and some software and, and a little piece of paper like you guys <clears throat> all have in your announcement booklet. Um, you can glance at it if you want to. Um, it's the blue insert. This past year, our church finally updated our computer software. I've never gotten excited about church software before, but I did this last year um, so that we can actually keep track of the gifts and talents that people have and want to share. And it's been ages since we've actually given people a chance to update that. And so we're asking each of you when you come up later and put your pledge card in to also fill out this blue sheet of paper and mark any gifts or talents that you have that you could share. Don't forget to put your name and your contact information so we know who, who is who. Maybe you can have the talent of plumbing. I would have called you a couple weeks ago. The bathroom was running endlessly and it wasn't simple enough for me to figure it out. We would have called you, seeing if you could have come in. Or maybe it's the, the talent or willingness to help with coffee. Or maybe you're good with your hands, like Al. I want to show you guys something. So this was also the reason why I'm preaching down here. This is pretty heavy. But look at this table. Oh, gosh. This was made by one of our members. We try to be careful not to, you know, single people out too much because everyone's doing so much for this church and we can't lift them all out. But one of our members, Al, made this table. Oh. He's made a bunch of things around the church using his hands uh, as a way to give. Um, he made the the thing that holds all the hearing support devices. He made that by hand out of wood. You can see it over there. You know the bell Pastor Linders likes to ring endlessly in the gathering space. He made the mount, the wooden mount that, that um, supports that. And now he made this beautiful table. Al gives his heart to the Lord by creating beautiful things for the people in the community that he loves. He's uh, made this table. I get to have it in my office. Um, when he brought it in, uh, we were joking. It's so heavy and solid and beautiful that um, we said it was going to outlast me, even if I stay here for 100 years like Pastor Linders uh, has stayed here. This table is still going to be here. And I love the inscription on the bottom that, that Al put in there. Oh. It says, St. Paul's Lutheran Church, Doylestown, cherry slab, grown by God in Pennsylvania, assembled by my hand, Al Mick, October 2022. 20, a way of Al to give his heart. To be a member is to be accountable to the well-being of the whole, to make a commitment. Block wrote, Commitment is the willingness to make a promise with no expectation in return. I was telling Al to make sure he put in the receipts for the cost of the materials, and he said, oh, just donate it to, to fish. Making a promise, no expectation in return. An expression of commitment to the mission of this church. Which brings me to the last voice that I heard this past week. It was... Last Tuesday, Abigail announced that I would be putting the kids to bed alone that night because she had an impromptu meeting on Zoom with her church. And I knew that she had another commitment with her church the, the couple days later on Thursday night. And so I teased her, why are you so obsessed with your church? Uh, of course, there was some irony there since I'm a pastor at her church. But I asked more seriously, what is it? What, why do you like your church? And I made a, a face hoping she'd maybe say something about me, which she didn't. She laughed it off, and she gave a legitimate answer. Why does it matter? Why, why are you giving your time on a Tuesday night or a Thursday night or whenever you're doing it? And she said, I love my church because of the worship, the preaching, and the small groups. Bing, bang, boom. That's why it mattered to her. 
Why do you love your church? Why would you give sacrificially of your money, of your time, of your talents? Is it because of our soup supper traditions and Lent? Because we open up this place to house the homeless shelter in March? Is it because we're a church where we can also watch the Phillies go to the World Series and have a blast together? Is it because of what your child learned at catechesis or Sunday school? Is it because of the awesome nursery attendant? All the money the folks give, all the hours they serve, all the Sunday mornings they get out of bed and worship, why does it matter? So many members who move away, as I mentioned, Thelma Williams said, they can't find anything like this church when they, when they go away. It makes it hard to leave. I think they miss a church that's grounded in tradition. We don't do it all when it comes to music, but the sacred classical organ-led music we do is excellent because of volunteers and our growing adult choir and Adam's professional leadership and generous financial support that allows us to bring in local professional musicians for the big days. Pastor Galvin told me he's cooking up something with a group of high schoolers and, and parents, and they were talking about opportunities at St. Paul's, but they're also thinking through what are the strengths of this place? What, why does this place matter in our community? And several of them pointed to our theology and to our beliefs, which is unique compared to other Christian churches. I think they were appreciating that we're guided by intellect, that we preach unconditional love, that we affirm that our worth is a gift and not an achievement, a place where we can wrestle with Scripture and not pretend it was all written to be read literally, a place where we've proclaimed for years that sexuality is a gift, whether you're gay or straight or otherwise, what matters to God is fidelity and trust in relationships. We're a church that doesn't settle for easy answers, but wrestles with questions. Why does it matter? Your gifts of money, time, and talent matter also because through it, we've been able to establish ourselves as an anchor church, a church that other Lutheran churches around us look to for support. Just last week, Pastor Galvin was filling in in Feasterville for a church that was in a last-minute pinch, and we could, he could go over there and help them out. Pastor Linders was asked to record the Christmas Day video sermon that all the synod will receive um, if they want to use it for worship. We have a purpose as, at St. Paul's that reaches beyond Doylestown. St. Paul's Lutheran Church, it's a place where we can work out together what it means to follow Jesus. And so, I invite you to give generously in the year to come. You're supporting beautiful people, beautiful things, to give of your time and your talents. Maybe you can't make a table like Al. I certainly can't. But let us all find a way to not only sing that refrain like Frank, but to make it true. I will give my heart to the Lord.
God, we are grateful for many things, for a sunny Saturday afternoon and the walks taken and projects completed, for cabinets that never lack food, for the sight of soldiers embraced in Kherson and blue and yellow flags waving in the air. We thank you for our country's own service members, past and present, for their willingness to move often, to shift gears and pivot with unexpected assignments and timing. Help us honor their service through engaged and fair-minded citizenship. We give thanks for a peaceful and fair election in our own country. May we never take for granted a system that allows us to determine our future peacefully. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O oh God, we are indebted to you always for the gift of life. Let not good health or fortune deceive us into false reliance upon our own strength. Remind us that our worth comes from you and not our income. Help us measure success based on how well we have loved. Help us to surrender our desire for control and trade it for a daring commitment to your will. Help us be generous in the year ahead and may our giving grow us closer to you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O oh God, we pray for your good and faithful servants. Bless those whose acts of service never end, yet often go unnoticed. Bless those who offer so much of themselves, yet never feel that it is enough. Bless those who are steady and reliable, and guide those in search of meaningful ways to give back. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. 
Hear us as we remember those in need and name them before you now. Hear us as we remember those whom we have loved and lost and name them before you now. All this we pray through Jesus Christ our Lord, in whose name we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen.